All right, now that the pigtail's on, the capacitor's on, motor's on, and the four in one is just about ready, we're going to go ahead and add the flight controller on. But in order to do that, you gotta have these six millimeter uh, standoffs. I use these little grommets. I think they're grommets. The O-rings, the rubber O-rings. That's what they're called, rubber O-rings. I put those around um, just because this actually, the six millimeters uh, that these are is just slightly, slightly too short um, for this. And so make sure to have a good secure connection all the way down um, where there's no movement. It gives it a little bit of extra height and then slide that right on. Make sure that these line up when going in and there you go. That's a secure connection. There's no rocking in the board. Um, there's no movement. It's all the way in. And that just adds a little bit of extra vibration dampening. Soft mount, all the things. <sighs> Sorry if I'm kind of monotone doing this. Builds are usually a uh, multi-day project that I break up sitting here and talking to you on camera while doing it, it's actually pretty exhausting. So forgive me if it's not extremely exciting. So what's next? All right, so we have this on there. Um, after this, I actually use nylon standoffs. And I, I had a kit of nylon uh, standoffs that gave me a bunch of different sizes. And I'm pretty low on the size I like to use, but I think that's it right there. Um, this would be, that's an eight millimeter standoff right there. So this will go on. And the reason you want a taller standoff here is because on your stack plate, that's going to go above it. You're going to have your receiver on the bottom and you're also going to want a little room because this is where I stash, you know, uh, spare wire. The, the, I don't, I don't cut my wire perfectly to length. I do leave a little spare wire for movement. So if you want to take your, your top plate off, if you want to take your flight controller off, there's enough room to move everything around. And so having a little bit taller um, top plate gives you a little room to hide stuff up underneath it. So we'll get those on, Let's see if we can find a few more. And again, this stuff is all gonna be linked down below the video. So just to show you how it's gonna go, it'll go like this. And you'll have enough room in between to stack your, your receiver. I put the receiver on the bottom uh, so this side, and I put the VTX on the top. All right, so that's how it'll fit dry. What we'll do first, though, is get all the right wires soldered. All right, so before you get to soldering anything, you want to make sure to take those nylon standoffs back off because they melt <laughs> when you're soldering stuff and you're too close to them. Um, but this is how things are going to solder up. So you have your video in and out over here. So your video in is going to be the wire, the yellow wire coming from your camera, the, your video signal going into the board. And then the video out will be the yellow wire going to your VTX. So the reason that is is because you're using a Betaflight OSD capable board. When you do this, it'll input the Betaflight uh, OSD information onto your FPV feed for you like voltage and uh, flight time and so forth. So that's that's uh, right there. Then you have this ground, five volt and S bus signal pad. So in that order, ground, five volt, S bus. That'll go to your RX, your receiver. And then spare ground, uh, you can, this is a 3.3 volt if you're using spectrum. Um, this will be where you put your 3.3 volt or you get your 3.3 volts. And then up here is another ground and a five volt. Uh, you don't actually have to use this five volt for anything. I just uh, always solder it because it is a power source. Um, besides that, you could add a buzzer. Um, if you're going to be, at, I don't use buzzers for racers. Um, I don't usually lose them on a field, so I don't really worry about it. Um, but if you are going to run a buzzer, you're gonna to wanna to do it remote location, similar to this. You can actually stash it right up in this little pocket. See this little cutout, how it's cut out and rounded? that's where the buzzer can fit but you're going to need to do that with the wire you're going to have to slide up underneath that and uh, it fits right there just remote location it and it'll be fine right there um, and then uh, this last pad over here is for your smart audio this is from your vtx it'll be the white wire it goes right into your this is the t6 um, t6 
pinhole and that'll allow you to change your VTX uh, uh, power output, channel, and frequency all from your radio and goggles. So let's get to it. Now before I get to soldering, I do the whole measuring thing. So this is the stack plate and how I'm gonna have it set up. The uh, VTX will be on top, like I said, it'll be sitting like this. Um, you can set like this or you can set like this. I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it like this and I'm gonna run it a little bit closer to this side right there and the reason I'm gonna do that on this because I've got this new stack plate and this fits nicely right in there and so does this so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this heat shrink off I'm gonna remove this ULF connector our UFL connector and I'm gonna put this one on there and then I'm gonna sit it just like that really close to this side over here on the edge and you want it to be closer to the back than the front because this is where the camera can hit up against so you don't want it, the VTX to be in the line of, of uh, the reclining camera so what this will do is it'll sit right there and it'll run in the heat shrink and it'll sit and go up under just like this so it'll go out the back just like that and uh, when they send these VTX's out they now send them with their own uh, spare heat shrink so I cut the original one off I put this antenna on up underneath like that and then I heat shrink it I actually I can't do that now that's what I would do typically but because uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be right hand or left hand at the race I can't do that now so I'll just end up cutting this off a little bit um, I'll run it through and just like that just hold it there it should should stay um, I might run a zip tie or something and then I measure so this one also so knowing it's gonna sit like that knowing it's gonna sit like this direction right there these wires two right ones are uh, this side this runs the battery power. I do run this directly to battery power. And then the yellow one is video, which goes right below it. Uh, this black one is another ground. Uh, I don't find it necessary uh, to go on the board again. And then uh, I usually actually just snip it off up, up close and put some liquid, uh, liquid electrical tape on it. And then uh, the yellow, so yellow goes right below to the video. And then the red one right here is to power the quad, or power to the camera. And the white goes to the T6 pad for the smart audio. So knowing how it's going to be mounted, I'll sit over here and I'll kind of measure out the wires. And then I usually double whatever I have the wire length at because I'm gonna tuck all the extra wire up underneath. I double it though. That way if I have to take the top plate off, there's room to move it out of the way so I can work on stuff. And I do that with the RX also. So then I find the RX. And so this has a little bit smaller wires than the uh, our, our, our RX antennas, I think, it looks like it, than the XM Plus. So the way I probably wanna run that one, let's see. Since the wires will be going to the back right here, I may just run it just like this. And then the RX wires would run possibly just down the sides over here in a forever tube. Yeah, I think I am gonna run it like that. I think it's gonna set up very nicely. And so I'll do that. And the way I mount, I'm gonna mount these, I'm gonna mount this bottom one since it has a lot of sensitive components right there <clears throat> and nothing covering it up. I'm gonna mount that one using the, the uh, servo tape because it has that thick padding. And so it'll sit nicely on top of that and it won't move around and it'll stick good. And then for the VTX, because it, it is going to have the nice flat bottom already, I'll use the, uh, the flat tape. That way it's not creating an extra profile. Um, I don't need any vibration protection on this. Um, it, it, it's never gone out on me because of that. All right, so let's get started with the measuring, cutting, and wiring up. Oh, and the camera. Last but not least, the camera. So the camera sits, you know, it's going to sit right there. And right up there so I just measure that out the furthest one is going to be uh, the video out cable for it 
that's where it's going to run right there, or the video in cable, it's going to run right there. And so I do the same thing. I grab that. I don't do double on this one though, but I do go a little bit further, probably half as far, and all that wire I'll tuck up underneath there. It's just I want that flexibility to be able to move stuff out of the way and uh, have room to work on things if I need to work on it. Um, the power cable is going to go to the VTX, and the ground goes to this first ground right up here, and I will double that one. I'll actually match the length to the end cable because when I move when I move it, it'll it'll be the same length. So it'll, it'll be about the same length. So I'll be able to move it out of the way. I am not lying. A butt screamed. Give me the other names. Rap said in a no nonsense tone. <laughs> what I'm doing right here to make it easier on my life, you can. plug and play. All you do is you just slip something thin behind to push up the little tab. Don't push it too far. You don't want to break the tab. The tabs to secure the, uh, the wires in there. But once it's in there uh, and it's coming out, you can take it out. So that's out. And then this one slides right in. So these have little notches not sure if you're going to be able to see that, but they have little notches. And that's going to go where the window's at right there. And I'll use this to help me push it in. And once it's in there, make sure to put a little pressure on that tab so it gets back into the funk. And there you go. This keeps it from having to uh, splice any wires, makes your life a little bit easier. There you go. So you got that wiring harness down. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off to get the tool out of the way. So after it's all wired up, it kind of looks like this. It's a little bit of a jumble, uh, a mess, a mess right there. But that's why it's going to be hidden, because uh, this will wrap underneath that stack plate, plug right into the VTX, and this will sit right there, plugged into the camera. But that's all set up, and that's all. That's two harnesses kind of rigged together with the uh, power cable, and then uh, rigged together with the power cable, and then also the VTX going in. You can, if you want, it's up to you though. But if you want them to be totally separate harnesses together, you don't have to hook the power wire up. It could go into this five volt right there, because I think all the cameras are taking five volts. Yeah, five to thirty-six volts. So you can plug it right into the five volt right up here and you'll be good to go. You wouldn't have to do this, but I like this. I like this way. It's been very reliable for me. So I'm gonna keep doing that. Uh, next up is this guy, this little bitty guy. He's gotta find his cable. All right, there's the harness. So that plugs in just like this. No, just like that. All right, and there you go. It has your it goes ground, power, and signal. Um, I have been seeing some people, if you're using this particular um, board, this particular uh, uh, receiver, I've seen people take this part off and just direct solder, and I may do that, because this is a, that's big. That just adds a lot of extra uh, wasted space right there. I'm not afraid to direct solder. Soldering is easy, you just got to be quick on small components, sensitive components, you gotta be quick with the touch. That's why you pre-tin everything. You tin the pad, you tin your wire, that way you can just touch quickly and be done with it. Um, instead of having to hold it on there for a long time. But I'll start getting this wired up. So this is going to be facing like this. And so the wires will be going right there. And because it's so close, I'm going to, since this is going to be moving off and everything I'm doing is moving it over here, is how I'm measuring it. That's basically the full cable. And so that's a lot of cable. It's gonna be stashed right there though, but that's because I wanna be able to, everything to be able to move. And this cable goes right there. So let's just match how far these cables can go. So for this one, it's just like that. Everything moves off, get it measured. It's a lot of cable, but it makes your life easier later on. And as long as you can clean it up and hide it easily, 
there's no harm. All right, so you prepare these cables just like the others. All right, now that all the wires are wired up, I want you to pay attention. I laid them down. See how I laid them down going inwards, all the wires. What I'm going to do, just like I did earlier with the capacitor wires, I'm going to remove the stress points from the soldered area to the non-soldered area. Uh, on, on a flight controller, uh, hot glue, if that's all you have, works fine. Um, you never want to do hot glue on a VTX or anything that's going to get warm, like your 4 in one That just, it, it reactivates every time uh, it gets warm and moves around. You don't want that. So, and basically what I'm doing, I'm just creating kind of a brace that goes past it. And this stuff, this stuff pops right off. Like you just take a an exacto knife to it, and it'll pop off pretty easily without leaving a mess behind. So that's the benefit of that. And it's all about layers. Don't put too much on at once. Layers.